Hi, welcome to On Beacon Hill. My name is Paula Robinson, and today my guest is Senator Marion Walsh. Now, as you know, I'm sure that um, w the reason that we're running these series of shows, and, and you can verify this with me, is because we find such a big difference between the way media interprets what's going on on Beacon Hill and the way what is actually happening. You want to tell us a little bit first about yourself and then about some sure. of the things that were working? Well, I'm so happy that you have the program. Thank you. It's, um, I think the key was in your first sentence that how the media interprets what happens. Mm -hmm. I wish they had a standard of reporting what happens and then let all of us make the interpretations as citizens. Well, but myself, I am um, pleased to say that I'm recently elected to the State Senate. I'm a Democrat from West Roxbury and I've been in a little bit more than a month. And prior to that, I served for two terms as a state representative, as a Democrat, in the House of Representatives. I'm an attorney. I went to a local law school evening, Suffolk University. I did graduate work. I have a degree in um, ethics and theology, a graduate degree from Harvard Divinity School. And I went to a great small women's college named Newton College of the Sacred Heart, where I studied philosophy and history. And I went to a wonderful um, high school here in the neighborhood, Ursuline Academy. Mm. And I have strong interests in, um, in public service. I find it rewarding and productive. And I'm pleased that I have the opportunity to work on behalf of the people of Dedham. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. You're very, um, that's, you're unusually qualified for, for, <laughs> <laughs> enough said. Right. <laughs> Whatever it is we do. <laughs> okay. Um, let's talk a, a little bit about the difference between, um, being a state representative and being a senator? Can you well, I'm learning. <laughs> I, um, as a practical matter, state representatives represent 40,000 people. Mm -hmm. And we have 160 state representatives. Okay. That's what I was when I represented West Roxbury and Roslindale. Now that I serve in the state senate, it's a much smaller body. Mm -hmm. We have 40 state senators. And each of us represent 160,000 people. Mm -hmm. Senatorial districts are much more diverse. Mm -hmm. The one that I'm elected to serve is a third of the voting population of Boston, Dedham, Westwood, Walpole, and Medfield. Okay. In a smaller body, your voice has more influence and you have more responsibility. Mm -hmm. I see. And um, now, do you work directly with the state representatives to accomplish your goals? I do. Mm -hmm. The ability to which we work together and how closely we work together is really a function of our personalities. Mm -hmm. There is no manual on how to be a state rep or how to be a state senator. Uh, you rely an awful lot on common sense and professional courtesies. In the district that I represent presently, we have 10 elected state representatives. Mm -hmm. Now they ran, they took an oath, they have a charge independent of mine to the people they represent. I also represent 160,000 people, the same people they do. Right. On some issues we'll be like-minded and others we won't. Um, we each have to make our decisions independently. Mm -hmm. What I do as a state rep and now as a state senator is try to be mindful of their concerns. As a state senator, if I can be helpful, if once their matter passes the House and it comes to the Senate, I would like to help them have it become law. Right. If it gets bogged down and there's no one advocating for that, I'd like to do that for them. Okay. Other issues are also important that are not necessarily legislative. There can be community concerns uh -huh. where a state senator can bring the authority and influence of their office to help a neighborhood problem. Right. However, you can cause a problem if you don't do it right. You have to have respect for the different levels of government. We have select people who are elected planning boards, different other elected people who have also responsibilities. And it's not up to me to roll over them. It's up to me to say, how can I be helpful? Right. Um, because, you know, they have a separate duty as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the difference of time representation between the state representative and the state uh, senator is... Well, having so many more people. I have four times as many people now. Okay. Well, I mean the term. The oh, term. It's, oh, the length of service is a two-year term. Of service. Okay. State rep, state senator, both serve for two years. They're both two-year terms. A, a U.S. congressperson, two mm -hmm. years. A U.S. senator, six years. So by the time you figure it out, it's time for you to get real. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, now, there, let's talk a little bit about the work that you're currently doing. All right. You just 
were inaugurated, or is that is that sworn in? We, we had the inauguration sworn. ceremony, mm -hmm. and um, it was January sixth. And the following day, you were working on. The we were working on the uh, famous Gardenville. Right, and can you talk a little bit about that? What are the complications now? Uh, I'm, I'm understanding a little bit that the um, that the Boston Garden is on public land. But, uh, the new garden, on private land, or it's a public. Right. Talk, talk. Well, the the whole garden controversy is a nice example, probably a great civics lesson. Mm -hmm. um, and as a legislator, what I often read in the newspapers and what I experience as a state senator are again very different. We have some very fine national sports teams here in Boston, right. and they've been playing at the very old Boston Garden, mm -hmm. which is owned privately. The people that own the garden would like to build a new Boston garden. They'd like to build it on what is now public property. Okay, now it's currently on public property. It's currently on private property. It's currently on private property. Right. Okay. But they don't want to build it on the present site. They want to build it on the land behind it. Oh, I see. Which is, pu which is, pu which public. is publicly owned. And, There's okay. also air rights. Public air rights are involved in other... Public air and rights? And easements, yes. And the, the tension. That's new now, isn't that? No, it's, it's always it's always been a problem because of the height of the building, and it, it's a legitimate mm -hmm. land use um, uh, problem. Mm -hmm. And the concern is recognizing that having national teams and having such faithful, uh, caring fans is one a wonderful experience for us, and two brings in a lot of revenue. That was yeah, that was that was my thing. Now, even though the other the other piece is that even though the teams are privately owned mm -hmm. and the the, the uh, garden is privately owned, the teams are kind of publicly owned in in, right. a, in a way. We have relationships. Right. Personal relationships with it. Not teams. just personal relationships, but public investment. That's <laughs> you know, right. people, there's a certain amount of not revenue that's not just goes to the state to support the things that are going on in the state or in the state or in the city, but also um, the whole pride and moral and you know all of that. Oh, it's yeah. you're right. It's far reaching. It touches everything from the person who goes in to watch a game and buys that pizza or the hot dog or pays to park that car mm -hmm. to the T-shirt that's sold. Um, to all the people who get together in their living room and watch that game. Right, it's uh, fair, okay. And then all the taxes that are paid on the services that are provided that support right. the entertainment. So now what is the controversy? Is it not being allowed to? Is it, is it that it can't be built on the land that's behind? Or The controversy is what is considered a fair and reasonable package for the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. um, the property, the, the property owned by the public, the easements around the property in question, the air rights, and the MBTA parking garage, which has 1,200 spaces. Now, that's a publicly owned parking garage. Um, one of the um, elements in the whole package was that those individuals who bought um, deluxe seating from the Boston Garden owners, there's 900 of them, mm -hmm. uh, part of their package is they would have a prime parking space in this publicly owned garage. Are those annual seats that are bought? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the owner of the garden made representations to the um, luxury box seats that they would have a parking space in a public garage. Mm -hmm. And part of the commitment from everyone involved was knowing that I have a parking space in that garage. Right. Well, you can't promise what you don't own. Right. So that was one big problem right. for the developer and for the, for the uh, legislature. How can you give title to something you don't own? Mm -hmm. As a practical matter, a lot of people come into work and park in Boston and park in that parking garage. If every time there's a garden event with 900 um, spaces promised, that leaves only um, 300 available, where does the public park? Mm. Now the people that own the land, do. The not own the parking garage? Right, it's an MBTA public parking garage. Okay, so now is it is part of the air rights piece that the that there's no garage that can be built in the garden itself or the, the, under the garden or over? Well, there's also an MBTA um, uh, stop part of this, which is under the garage. Right, but it doesn't help the uh, the private person with the 900 seats. No, it doesn't. Right. Um, and there were also other complications that at one point um, the garden was going to get free advertising on the MBTA, which would annually have been $400,000. Um, 
Um, there was, there's Is been, that because of the free parking or in exchange for the free parking? No, there, no the, that was one more thing the developer wanted to have was free advertising. They wanted to advertise their garden events on the MBTA property without charge. Well, that's not fair. <laughs> well, that was well, that's family, not for me to judge. No, but it is. It, you're, no, you're perfectly entitled to have an opinion on that. <laughs> yeah. One, that, that's the point, mm -hmm. is that there's a public interest here. The yeah. public owns that garage. Yeah. The public owns the tea station. And the public owns the land that the new garden hopes to be built on. Right. So it, it's when does the public get protected without breaking the agreement? Right. How do we maintain these great teams in Boston and mm -hmm. all the good things it brings? So the, also is the developer's the threat that he'll take the teams outside? Well, that's, that's been reported, that the teams will leave Boston unless we give the developer what the developer thinks they ought to get. That's interesting. Now, there are some people who feel that no matter what the developer wants, give it to them because we don't want to lose the teams. Well, that's foolishness. And there are yeah. other people who feel, as you do, that... Yeah. You, you can't do unarmed robbery here. Yeah. There, there yeah. is a, um, a balance of interests. Yes. And that's when we get concerned about the media. Right. Um, it's not too often reported that there was a reasonable, um, honorable factor here mm -hmm. and being fair to the public. But right. if they're not informed that their interests may be sold out, Jeopardized, right. then they won't know. And yeah. they will be critical without being informed. That's true. Uh, that's I can understand that. Let's move on a little bit before we get too heated in this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but we'll be keep watching to see what happens. I'm I'm very interested, and I feel enlightened. Um, now, there are two pieces of legislation that are going on here in Dedham that you're working on. Yes. Okay. Um, local pieces, so to speak, or will mm -hmm. have a very strong local impact. Mm -hmm. It's, it's interesting. Legislation can be so far-reaching, like the Boston Garden Bill, mm -hmm. and also can be a forum where we address local concerns. We have reached the era of regional businesses. We have things like Home Art that visit our communities as proposals, Costco that come, or the Home Depot, which is threatening to come into West Roxbury, which will impact Dedham greatly. And what we have are um, zoning, which may be commercial, that used to exist at a time before we had the ability to have these gigantic regional businesses. Mm -hmm. And so a developer may comply with the zoning laws that says, well, I'm a commercial um, use, it's commercially zoned, I can come in here. Mm -hmm. And there's no regard for traffic or air quality. Or you, you may have a situation yeah. where... Well, there's also a thing, what, now, what about local jobs for local people and that kind of thing? I'm not sure what has happening with dead and jobs, but a lot of the times with those, right. that money make... The Dedham residents may dump their money into that store, and all of that money may go out. It may, Dedham may never see the money. It's very so, good in point. addition to dumping it's a very dumping good point. ground. But it's a very good point because um, these regional businesses can offer products usually for much less than the local businesses can. Mm -hmm. But the people that work for the regional businesses make much less than the local merchants um, earn. And the money goes back to the national headquarters, which right. may be in Delaware or Atlanta. You're absolutely right. right. Um, and the other problem is, is that the local businesses can't compete. Right. So it'll, it potentially would close a lot of local businesses down. Now, that, a lot of that is going on in Boston. That's right. Yeah. The other problem is, is that you may have a community um, adjacent that hosts a huge business. Mm -hmm. And it's on the border of another community. Mm -hmm. And the hosting community gets the revenue get some benefit from having this gigantic business in their, in their neighborhood. The bordering community gets none of the revenue, none of the business, has no standing to come to a meeting and be heard, to say, I don't want this, or we would like a crossing guard for the school across the street for the children. Right. It has no legal standing to even be listened to. And they may also to. have all the traffic and everything. Exactly. Yeah. And the legislation that um, I have filed is two things. One piece strengthens our environmental process created by the state, the MEPA process, mm -hmm. and requires that certain people must come to the table and discuss this. Mm -hmm. it looks into traffic, that it should be a real factor in determining whether a project ought to go in. Right. There is right now no traffic guru. No one measures the impact in a professional, objective way. Uh, the mm -hmm. second piece of legislation is a um, commission mm -hmm. to invite the communities of Dedham and West Roxbury 
to have hearings to look at the impact of regional businesses on their communities right. and establish a criteria that would allow a neighboring community to be heard. Dedham should be at the table if a Home Depot goes into West Roxbury. It right. so affects the Riverdale 109 section. Mm -hmm. And they can come and be ignored right now under the law. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I mean, a, a metaphor for that would be very much the way importing has affected the United States. Um, and I don't want to go into that right now. We have. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the environmental protection process. Um, what is it that can, is, is being done currently? And, and, and a little bit about maybe why um, the Clinton administration moved the EPA. I didn't realize it wasn't a, um, a cabinet uh, post. Mm -hmm. And you'd like to yeah, if you, have uh, at that level yeah. of major policy making. So, so what, uh, now what is it, you know, you said that there isn't anything at the, at the community level or at the state level with the environmental protection. Is that a private industry? Well, no, there, there is a, uh, we, in Massachusetts we have a Secretary of Environmental Affairs, mm -hmm. and that's a cabinet level post. However, there is not the teeth, the, the strength of that office is very weak. Why? Um, example, we have this MEPA process, the environmental um, process for um, building certain things of a certain footage if they're by a state roadway. Mm -hmm. And going through that process, which one had to do for this Home Depot on the Dedham West Roxbury line, during that entire process, the 109 Bridge Street intersection mm -hmm. was never discussed. That is an historical bridge scheduled to be redone in 1994. That bridge is level of service F, the lowest level of service of our bridge system in the state. Mm. And deciding whether it's advisable to put in a gigantic lumberyard home improvement store a quarter of a mile down the road, it was never examined what is the impact of 10,000 cars more a day on that intersection. Right. Right. That intersection now, is, that is already that should failing? be observed by the, that has to be really thought about at the community level because it seems like a small thing. At the community level, it's a very large thing, but at the, at the uh, if you're dealing with 160,000 people's problems, right. so then it becomes a very small thing. Right. Or at least an obscure thing. And it's important to Dedham. Dedham has a pay detail there every day. Right. It's very dangerous. And, um, when you add at least 10,000 more cars, and right. you're talking about a tractor trailer truck on I a was regular say, we're not basis. Talking about the tractor trailer trucks, right. Um, on a regular basis, mm -hmm. it, it's almost inconceivable that a Home Depot plan got reviewed and certified by the state environmental process, and the DPW for the Commonwealth was never at the table, and the traffic impact on intersection was never examined. So the recommendation then is to have. Um, to have a standard? Right. And what is to the have standard? a punch list, mm -hmm. to have appropriate parties with responsibility to the public mm -hmm. be at the table. Okay. And, and how are those appropriate parties going to be decided? Is that well, in a suggestive mode? It, it's, it? No, it's in the legislation. Mm -hmm. We look at the different levels of government from local to statewide that common sense and history have shown mm -hmm. ought to be there. Now, they, you may have a party, let's say um, the um, MDC, well, let's say it was not on an MDC roadway, it's on a state roadway, but not MDC. Mm -hmm. They're on the punch list to come to the meeting. Well, they would come and say, listen, this is not within my jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It's not an MDC roadway. I have no reason to be here. And they just sign off. They came. It was determined it's inappropriate for them to participate. Right. And they're not at the table. Right. However, it will require everyone to be there. And if you have a responsibility in this project, you must attend to it. Yeah, it's a very logical process, you know. Um, and very simple. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. Now, let's talk a little bit more on the local level with the community selectmen meetings and the town development development and responsibility through these, um, through these town meetings. How is that impacting at the um, state level? Well, every city and town has some kind of form of town government. Mm -hmm. And in the communities that I represent, they have select people that are elected for a period of, of, of terms. And they have certain functions and responsibility for local government. There are times when local government is impacted greatly by the state. 
and they will come to the state for education, for information, for assistance. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do is periodically attend the select meetings in each of my communities. Mm -hmm. I'll let them know I'm coming. Um, it does a lot of things for me. One, I get to understand what are the problems that they have to deal with on a regular basis. And that's very important seasoning for me when I'm working on state issues. And as a practical matter, they'll know I'm coming and they can say, listen, Senator, I need your help on these things. Mm -hmm. I have you more information on this thing. So it's communication, an awful lot of it. Right, and, and even as much as impacting this kind of thing with the bridge on, uh, yes. on that level. Okay, um, and what are, what are some of the suggestions that you might have for developing the responsibility of the town's people at the, um, at the uh, town meetings and such? You mean for us, the citizens? Yeah, for, uh, for the citizens communicating with the selectmen, for instance. Well, I, I can't overstate yeah, how yeah. important it is for residents to speak up, mm -hmm. for them to communicate their concerns, for us to realize that our government at local or state level does not work on automatic pilot. It's about us having information, making observations, making recommendations, mm -hmm. and then pursuing them. To just put it on the table and walk away won't solve it. It just exposes it. And not to create an adversarial environment. I un unveiled a problem, ha ha, mm -hmm. what are you going to do about it? Right. You know, I have a problem, how can we solve this? Mm -hmm. And make it about solving the problem and not about personal ambitions or the kinds of things that are not important and are not going to serve the public good. Right. If we could require that standard of each other at any public forum, we would all be better off in a personal yeah, way and also get a lot more done. <laughs> in solving our problems and it would be much more enjoyable. Okay, okay, that's very helpful. Now, um, we're talking about rules and turf rules and, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing and egos and such. You want to talk a little bit about the, the difference at the federal, state, city, and town jurisdiction levels? Um, sure. I see much more clearly, especially now as a state senator, that there are levels of government, that a government um, is complicated, and that sometimes you can't get something done just because the process is too long. Right. When, when I address a problem, I consider that the, the water rate problem is a major one. Now, those are water bills that are c created by our local communities. Okay, now let's talk about the, the water rate problem. I know sure. we're narrowing down on time, so we're going to have to make this as tight a package as possible. Specifically, what water rate problem? Just so that it's... We have been ordered um, by the federal government to clean up uh, Boston Harbor. Okay. And we've been ordered to have a second backup treatment plan. Mm -hmm. The cost is about $6 billion. We were offered the money, 90% of it, by the federal government. For 10 years, the state, the state sat on it and never exercised that option. Now the rate payers have to pay the cleanup of that harbor. So we have 61 communities that happen to be alive and, are, and around right now who are paying for the cleanup of a national historic landmark that's been polluted by vessels from all over the world. It's a good example of how we interface with each other. Right. You know, I how, is it that the, how is it that that money gets sat on for 10 years without? I, having not been in office, I can't really tell you. Um, we got warned. I've, I've read the warnings. I've gone over the history of this. Um, I can't find, it's not there's defendable. Mis, there's miscommunications at the various levels of jurisdiction and such. Okay, enough, it enough is. to say that. Okay, so what's happening at the, now, well, the consequences it's, it, is? It's starting to approach about $100 a month mm -hmm. for the average size family on a com combined water and sewer bill. Mm -hmm. And that's a serious injustice and also an economic problem because people, that's not money they're using now to go to the theater to buy a new dryer, right. to get their car tuned up. Um, to buy groceries. To buy groceries. <laughs> just talking. Just to survive. Right. It was such high unemployment and more high in our area of the country than the rest of the, the nation. Mm -hmm. Very serious problem and it's an injustice. So what are we doing? We're working. I'm, I'm getting more and more calls from people in our senatorial district. I'm working with the um, people in the town level. I'm working very closely with our congressperson, um, Joe Moakley, and we're developing a grassroots campaign mm -hmm. with the federal level of government that can recommend more federal funding to be sent back here to this region to provide some relief to the ratepayers. Okay, that's excellent. Um, 
Now, what is the community responsibility around this water bill? What can we as communities? It's very important that you write letters and make phone calls. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that the you letters and phone calls actually get read and heard. This is the yes, mm -hmm. you know. See, that's why I get so troubled by the misrepresentation in the media. When when one legislator gets a call from eight or nine people on the same subject matter, that has an impact. Mm -hmm. okay. It makes a difference. Okay, okay. Now, is there anything else that you would like to cover that we haven't covered? I just want to make sure that we've got as much as we can in the nutshell here, for the. Well, I, I think it's important that we carry on, and that we have confidence in our system, mm -hmm. um, that we have confidence in ourselves uh, to address our problems. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the time that you've taken here, and um, especially now that I more clearly understand the vast number of things that you have to look at with 160,000 people tugging <laughs> at you. And if all of us wrote letters in to... Um, Senator Marion Walsh about the water bill, then I imagine, uh, and other problems that we're having with the uh, with the building and such, and I imagine that we'd have a much easier community to work with. You've been watching Beacon. Uh, you've been watching on Beacon Hill. I'm Paula Robinson, and I'm <laughs> at the end of the day. Thank you very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you next show. Okay.